Michael Carnaval is grant manager and financial advisor. Securities offered through Raymond James Financial Services Incorporated, 400 Southbridge Street in Auburn, Massachusetts, 1-800-657-9126. A member of FINRA SIPC and then and are not deposits, not insured by FDIC or any governmental agency, not guaranteed by Webster Five Cent Savings Bank, and subject to risk, may lose value. Webster Five Cent Savings Bank is not affiliated with Raymond James Financial Services Incorporated. The information contained in this report does not purport to be a complete description of the securities markets or developments referred to in the material. The information has been obtained from sources considered to be reliable, but we do not guarantee that the foregoing material is accurate or complete. Any information is not a complete summary or statement of all available data necessary for making an investment decision and does not constitute a recommendation. Any opinions are those of Michael Carnaval and not necessarily those of RJFS or Raymond James. Expressions of opinion are as of this date and are subject to change without notice. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Conversations with, I'm Richard Mur Morco, your host, and it's the June edition. And as usual, we have Mike Carnival with us to tell us which way the wind is blowing economically. Well, other than economically, it's blowing down from Canada. Correct. And um, as they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And Mike will tell us wanna, how the economy is I want to write that down. Where there is smoke, smoke. comma, there's yeah. fire, period. It's up to you. you oh. I'm going to let you use Not poetic, an English major. poetic license. Okay. Uh, and our, uh, I can't economic... disagree with that. What? I can't disagree with that. So you're expecting fire, economically speaking? Mm, we're getting close, we're I getting... think. What would you say you mean to... We're not, we'll get into that. In... Yes. All right. Yeah. So uh, things have been happening. And there's something about the month of May leading into June that uh, uh, Mr. Carnival might want to talk about. We had a, the Dow uh, retreated. It did. 3.5%. Uh, it's under 33,000. Bonds uh, rose to uh, 3.86 from 3.76. And the 13-week Treasury is now at 5.25. The yield curve is, in, is still inverted. Now, the yield curve is something you might want to explain a little to the, the audience. Yeah, well, uh, you know, generally in um, sort of better times, the further out you go in a maturity, the higher the interest rate is. Yes. Um, when that flips, that usually is an indication that there's some concern that you know, things may not be... It flips the higher rates are short term. short term, right. The higher rates are short term, and the further you go out, the lower the rate you get, or the lower rate you can earn. Usually that happens when there's some concern that um, you know, the economy is not going to continue to do so well. And that's kind of where we've been oh, for over a year. Yeah. But it's really pronounced now. I mean, the 13-week, well, the uh, Treasury is ended the month at five and a quarter. I mean, that's... And what are the longer bonds going? Oh, you know, they're down, well, the 30-year is 3.86. So you can see it's completely yep. inverted. And the inver inversion starts at about one year. So, you know, um, they tend to go up a little bit between, uh, you know, 13 weeks in a year, and then they start heading down. And usually that's not a, um, you know, a good sign. And the inversion hasn't got any worse, but it hasn't got any better either. So it's kind of stuck, kind of, you know, they usually, and when they talk about that inversion, they kind of compare the 10-year treasury with the two-year treasury. And that inversion has been about 80 basis points. And it's fluctuated between, you know, 60 basis points to like 95 basis points, you know, over the last year or so. So it hasn't really gotten any better. 
at, at what, just as, this is unfair question, but at, at what point of a spread would it be time to start taking cyanide? Well, I mean, when does it get really, really? Well, I suppose if, it, if it got, <clears throat> I mean, if it got like, you know, over 1%, or like, you know, 100 basis points or 125 basis points, that would really be sort of an indication of how severe things could be. So it's, it's not severe, but it's also, as we'll see with some of these other indicators, it's not getting better either. Um, so uh, that's one thing you've emphasized that uh, this the sum is not going to be that good. Right. Anyway, May ranks eighth of twelve months. It usually, it's yep. it's not a great month. not a great month, and so, June is worse. Uh, maybe this is a little extreme with the yield curve and stuff. Yeah. But uh, the, I will let you play the poet and give us the saying. Well, it, it, the old saying is, uh, sell in May and go away, come back on Halloween Day. You know, you're not going to get into Hollywood unless you could say that with a little more. A little more. Oomph there. I'm trying, you know. Sell in May and go away, come back on Halloween Day. Boy, I was like pulling teeth to get you to do that. I, I'm, because I don't have a, uh, 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 what's the union card? So, uh, for after our yeah, I don't, sag, sag, sag. I don't have a sag card, so sag. you know, I, so if I true. if I was really good, I'd have one, but I don't have one. Well, you know, everybody starts somewhere. I suppose so, and I'm starting here, I guess. <laughs> uh, right, no further comments. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, thou at support after trading between thirty-three and thirty-four thousand most of the year. Yeah. Um, explain that a little. Well, you know. Uh, you want to, 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 to see where you may be going in the future, you want to take a look at maybe where it's been. And the market has really been stuck between a Dow 33,000 and Dow 34,000 for a very long time. Now, it ended the month of May just a shade under 33,000, uh, 32,800, I think, or something like that. Um, and so that was kind of a, a point where you say, okay, is it going to, you know, with all this negative type economic stuff being talked about, the fact that it broke the lower support price, does that mean it's going to go lower and then that 33 becomes the high point? It didn't happen. We're, we're now on June 8th and the, the Dow's up about a thousand points from, from when that happened. So we're still stuck in that 33 to 34,000. So people, you know, again, I think it has a lot to do with, you know, Long-term returns in the market of being able to stay in there and not being spooked by what happens, nothing's really happening. You know, the Dow is trading between 33 and 34,000. So one day it goes down 600 points, people panic. The next day it goes up 700 points, people are excited. But from a technical side, nothing has changed because it's still sort of range-bound between those two uh, uh, numbers. So the next stop on the downside would be 31,500. Right. Uh, 31,500, early March. That still seems to me, being who I am, that seems a little crypt cryptic. Yep. What do you mean by that? Next March or last March? Oh, uh, the 31,500 was early March of this year. So then we got a big up, rally. Then we big, so we're still, one could, if one were optimist, say we're still kind of in the rally. Correct even though we could go down and come up. Could go down, yeah. I mean, and with June being not historically a great month, would not be surprised if that, that the market will peak at some point. Well, June you have, it, it the, ranks in, as the ninth right. not nice month, right. which is worse than the 8th of May, so uh, as a bad month. Um, and recently it's been really mixed. Six of the last 10 years, June has gone up. Right. So it's, you know, it's historically not a good month, but, you know, the last decade it's been 
Is that, do, you, do you read anything into that, that the world, you know, the universe is telling us something? Nothing. Okay. Well, they found evidence of the UFOs, they're saying. No, okay. I, I, nothing other than um, if you lose money on your statement in the month of June, I wouldn't be too surprised. Okay, now we will, after all the little uh, optimism, pessimism there, We'll, we'll get on to the technicals. Okay. All right. Short-term sentiment improved. Correct. During the sell-off, 200-day New York Stock Exchange moving average is now 45% versus 52 a month ago. Right. Explain that to Mrs. and Mrs. America. So... Mrs. and Mrs. Schaub. A month ago, 52% of the stocks that are listed on the New York Stock Exchange were above their average price over the past year. What happened in the month of May, the market went down. So now instead of 52% being above their average price, Only it's down to 45. That's a good sign. That's a good sign because now people say, ah, oh, we're bottoming out a little. Right. Okay. And maybe I should think about taking a flyer on um, Boeing, which just announced a... Uh, uh, some type of uh, another problem with yeah, the uh, problem. 787, is it? Yeah, on bad news, uh, one of the Rothschilds once said. Okay, yeah. All right. Volatility uh, uh, index, now at 18 versus 16 a month at, uh, at, uh, ago. Um, that means there's lower fear? Correct. It's gotten a little better. You want a high number there, uh, but it's still under 20. And 20 is that point where um, low fear becomes average fear. So the fact that there's not a lot of fear by people. People get afraid generally when things really go down a lot. Mm -hmm. And when there's not a lot of fear, it's usually a sign that, well, maybe there's more to come. Because at some point, everybody will get afraid. Just whether, you know, you might want to write that one down, too. Um, at some point, everyone will become afraid of something. I don't have a pencil, so I'll okay. uh, you know, try to remember. I'll try to remember. That, yeah. yeah. But so you want to see high fear. That would be an indication that everybody has been frightened out of the market, and that's usually a good time to get in. I, I understand the... Uh Strange logic there. Um, uh, it, it, whether or not you know, sometimes I I've mentioned also, and other times we've gotten together. Peter Lynch's uh, it's attributed to Peter Lynch. Often it's darkest just before it's pitch dark. That's true. So uh, yeah, it's how how the average person reacts. Right. Uh, how the and how some of the nuts, well, the people who really probably take heart and go in on these uh, averages are probably not the average person. Correct. Okay. Correct, yeah. All right. The, uh, the stochastic, stochastic, what yes. does the word stochastic mean? I know you were going to ask that, and I don't know. Random. Yeah. I looked it up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this indicator, again, there's no, you know, road map, well, if this is this, then this means that. It's sort of, all these indicators are compared to what happened a, a time period ago, whether it's a day ago, a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, to compare, you know, well, where are we today in relationship to some other time period? And, uh, you know, that got better, uh, dropped over 20 points during the month. It was from really saying the market was overpriced a month ago to now sort of fairly priced. Not cheap, but, you know, fairly priced. And if you thought a month ago when the indicator said things were overpriced, you would say, well, maybe the market's, you know, it might go down. And sure enough, well, that's what happened. The Dow did go down. Now, you use the term fairly priced. Is that not an argument for just not doing anything? Yeah. Okay. You wouldn't want to, you, you know, in the middle of 
you know, don't get out, don't get in. It's sort of like stay the course. If it's at the top, sell maybe. If it's at the bottom, buy. In or, the middle. Or, yeah, or not necessarily, because I don't think you should ever get out. I know you don't. So but we, we, we've heard that. Before. If it's on the high side, you say to yourself, okay, it's kind of high. Um, so if it goes down, I kind of thought maybe it would, right? I mean, things are high. Hmm. Yeah. So or you don't buy it that way. You, know. you wouldn't want to maybe buy in there. You would probably want to wait until if it until it dropped. But you, you don't want to. Could be time to get that yacht. Could be. Yep. Um, and then the catch-all one is that fear and greed index, which takes into seven other indicators. And again, that gives you an indication of you know whether people are comfortable with the current level of the market or that they're really worried. And, um, you know, we're kind of in the, in the greed area. Um, it, it's, that's an interesting one because although the market went down last month, the Dow went down, the greed index actually went up. And I think that might have been, how do I explain that, it might be the fact that it was kind of a two-tiered market in, in May, you recall, because the Dow was down, but like the tech stocks, the anything yeah, exactly. artificial intelligence, one of those all skyrocketed. And although the Dow was down 3.5% in uh, May, the NASDAQ was up almost 6%. Yeah, right. So that's, maybe that explains why um, the greed indicator actually went up when you would have figured it would have went down. Okay. So what do we do? Tell the, tell the audience what they should do. Um, Don't worry. No, you got to use judgment, people. Yes. That's what we do. Stay the course. Stay the course. All right. Um, and uh, the Fed raised, uh, the, the federal funds rate went from, went up 0.25% to 5.25, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was um, noted elsewhere. Um, but that's, that's high. It is. It's it the highest high. in, since, uh, since 2007. Yeah. Well, what happened in two, what was that? What was spoiling around, kind of rumbling up from 2007, well, in 2008, really? 08, 09, you had the financial yeah. crisis. 07. Why, why five, uh, here we go. Why higher? Why that was the highest? Don't know. I mean, it had been. Obviously, it was creeping up. Then you had the financial crisis, which forced the Fed to cut rates a lot. So, so uh, would is this is the five point two five percent? Are we at a point where they might say, "Hey, wait a minute"? There's some talk of that, right? That uh, when they meet this month in June on the 14th, that they may not raise rates. Uh, but they keep saying that that doesn't mean they're done raising them. So, you know, maybe you get a month of, of no rate hike and then you go back to they feel they need to raise, raise rates. It's interesting because um, a lot of other countries are still raising rates. You know. Uh, Do you think they're confused? I think, uh, I think yeah. I, well, I, I think the whole pandemic thing, it, you know, threw in something that, you know, no one had seen before, or didn't really know how to react. You, you know, they keep saying, well, the Fed isn't political, but, you know, it's everything, becoming more and everything more. Everything is political. And we're more and more extremes opinions now. So I think, yeah, I, I think, I'm not saying they don't know what they're doing, but I think that, uh, you know, well, Probably not a lot of confidence. You have uh, the Australia, Bank of England, and the, Euro, uh, the European Central, the ECB, all hiked. No, and yesterday, Canada hiked again. And that, that was a surprise because they had, the last two meetings, they did not raise rates. So a lot well, of people were thinking they wouldn't raise them again. To keep it uh, flat again for a third month in a row, and they didn't. They actually raised them. 
Well, you've left something out here that I think uh, is really the cutting edge. And I wish you did. I, I wish you, um, you had. It's okay. my favorite. My favorite currency, the Turkish lira. Well, that's uh, that's appears to be in trouble. But it's always been it. That's <laughs> like saying Argentina has currency problems. Because not to offend uh, Turkey. Um, Turkey. I think that it's T U R K I Y E now. Okay. Um, I, I don't think it really matters what they do. The interest rate, you know, they played with their interest rates, you know, f for political reasons. Um, you know, the, the, the president there has tried to... He just you know, got reelected. He got reelected, right, but he, he, you know, he replaced people in the central bank with people that were favorable to uh, cutting rates to help him politically. So I'm not so sure Turkey is I, I that. think it's a fascinating experiment in that um, this has been going on for several years. Mm -hmm. He didn't just start uh, you know, inflating the, his own currency the, uh, last week. Right. You know, so he, he, I guess probably when he started, he said, this will make sure the economy just takes off. Yep. And I don't know how good or bad it's done, but if you have to keep up something like that forever... Um, how does he survive? And it's a good question is, you know, are we going to be like that? Because, you know, in 19, what was it, 71, when we, we tossed out gold, mm -hmm. that was when inflation really started, and it's never stopped. It may not go up. I mm -hmm. I noticed what you wrote here. Right. But if you said 19, from 1971, if we compressed it to 2023, mm -hmm. where we are now, the decline of the dollar, and we said it, and it would happen in, say, one or even two years, you'd say, we're, we're almost to hyperinflation. Right. So we're doing essentially kind of the same thing in a way, but just not at the speed, I mean... He's doing it kind of at the monetary speed of light. Yeah, I think their inflation number came out was about forty percent or something. Forty percent. Yeah, and ours is oh, we we we. Well, it peaked at eleven. At, at, uh, at us or them? Yeah, us. Us peaked at eleven. So I mean, which year? Uh, 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 the seventy. Oh uh, no no no! Was it last year? Last year peaked at twenty 11. or twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah, end of 21, beginning of 22. I think Biden has to change his name to Erdogan. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, so we're talking about Erdogan versus Biden. Mm -hmm. uh, the Duke of Wellington inspected his troops the night before the Battle of Waterloo. Mm -hmm. yep. And he looked at them and he said, I don't know if they scare the French, <laughs> but they sure scare the hell out of me. And uh, uh, I don't know if the Federal Reserve scares the hell out of you. Well, I think it's... I, I keep... You're hopping. a seasoned pro. I'm not. Yeah, and I keep hopping on the... You know, all we're seeing is extremes. You know, really. How, how long can you see extremes? Because when the extreme becomes if, normal... Well, that's the prob that would be the problem. If the extremes ever became normal. Now, we've got to write this down in some different way. Yes. Why yeah. don't you bring a pen? I, you know, pen and a notepad. Yeah. I mean, this is gold. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, you probably don't hear this everywhere, right? No, God. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, I, I guess. Did they let these people two walk down the street? <laughs> <laughs> Not on the same street or the same town. I have often walked uh, down the street before. Um, again, it is Massachusetts. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I, okay. That is an Eastern Mass, too. Yeah, so, so that is well, even... Well, this is Central. And then, and oh, the, yeah, this is... Western the, yeah, Central yeah, yeah, Mass. Yeah, 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 it's very Western Central. Yeah. But no, I, I think... 
Got to get back to sort of like some facts in the center rather than all these extremists. You know, and you're going in the, you know, you got your political season picking up again and you're right back there at the extremes again. Whereas you were not at the extremes before. Um, you know, I don't think you were as extreme as okay. you are. Let's, let's, be, let's get this in precision. Yep, not as. See, we're not as extreme. Now we're going to get a real extreme. Yeah. All right. So let's go to the economy. And going in the right direction again. Yeah, the rate now, of this is this, because I've beaten you up every time. Uh, yes, and I remember. Yeah, so. The you know, rate of increase is, is going in the right direction. Is, is falling. But Correct. we are still, still inflating. Yes. Okay. Just at a slower pace. At a, at a, at a slower pace. So we're not going to hell in a handbasket. No. But we're still going to hell. Right. Just slowly. Uh, slowly. All right. So uh, consumer prices are up 0.4, uh, and that's 4.9% for the past year, which, yeah, I mean, we've been in the fives before. And yeah. Stuff. Well, it was since <coughs> late, uh, June 2, 2021. Mm -hmm. And that's the, in the core, less food and energy um, is up 0.4, mm -hmm. which 5.5% um, for the past year. Able to produce prices up 0.2% after being negative two months in a row, right. which you did a happy dance over. And 2.3% right. for the year. Core was also up 0.2% at 3.2% per year. The key to all that, I think, is that the rate of increase is slowing. Mm -hmm. That's good. Will it ever get to the... And I, have, I do have issues with this. But will it ever get to the target 2%? And well, when could one predict yeah. that? A lot of people say it will probably be no time soon. Yet they still talk about that, which I don't quite get. You know, it's more wishful thinking. But again, it, I don't think it's like all of this stuff. The number isn't as important as like the direction. Is it going in the... Is it going in a better direction? And it is. And so that's, that's a positive. You know, whether it can get to 2% or it stops at 3 or 4 or whatever, um, it's not 11 anymore. So that's, you know, what I take from, from all these numbers, is things, at least on the inflation front, the rate of increase is slowing. Uh, that's usually good. Well, getting to something that might not be that as salubrious, mm -hmm. like that word salubrious, I don't yes. often use, I only use that on a Thursday. Must be because of the lamp. It's the lamp, the lamp, yeah. we have the new lamp there. Yeah. So uh, it, the leading economic indicators, April down 0.6%. 10 components, they have the leading indicators, are 10 components to give a snapshot of the economy. Seven of 10 negative consumer expectations, the worst. My fellow Americans, are not, we are not feeling that well about it all. Yep. This indicator predicts when a recession begins after three stay straight negative readings. April was the 13th straight negative reading. Yeah. And this is something we've avoided saying, but the R word, recession, we're giving over. Yeah, I mean, you would think if, if that's all you saw, you'd say, oh, we must really be in a really deep recession. But then you follow it up with inflation, or you follow it up with jobless claims, or you follow it up with the employment report. And those numbers don't indicate that. Now, that's, uh, ladies and gentlemen, mea culpa. But I saw, when I saw this, I saw a re, um, an article that disagreed with these numbers. Okay. And said that uh, the job, the, the, the increase in jobs are mostly not full time. And it also brought up how people are not, who are full time employed 
are not doing well. And I think you've heard the stories about full-time employed people who are living on the streets. Right. Uh, they, this ain't happy. This isn't good. Right. Um, the, the big thing is the, a lot of the increase has been in lower paid jobs. So, uh, uh, so that's why they haven't given us a call to come and work at the Federal Reserve. Correct. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I shouldn't have been waiting by the phone, is what you're saying to me. Um, well, maybe eventually it'll ring, but it'll probably be a wrong number. See, this is why we don't call you Mr. Optimism. <laughs> no. So, I mean, I think, uh, you know, if you just looked at this, you know, sort of in a classroom type thing, you'd say, oh, wow, um, leading economics, yeah, things are really bad. But if you didn't see leading economic indicators and you saw those other two reports, you'd have a totally different view. Even if you didn't know Correct. that it was, it was lower, lower pay. Correct. Job. Right. Now, what is realism? What is reality? Um, what is the reality of this country's economy and it's, the job situation? Yeah, it's probably, well, you know, we're, we're really service economy. You've got to make something. And service is generally lower paying you gotta make than something. manufacturing. You got to make something, or you're a poor country. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what it, what it, what it tells you. Ladies and gentlemen, if we haven't ruined your day, please tune in next month, and we'll do better. This is uh, Richard Morco with my Carnival conversations with for the economy for you, uh, that happened in May and starting forward in June. Thank you very much.